Hello, I'm Shauna Lahren with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. Along with the League and SFGovTV, I'm here to discuss Proposition D, a ballot measure which will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 5th. Proposition D would impose a business tax on commercial rideshare companies for fares generated by rides that start in San Francisco. Currently, the city of San Francisco does not impose a business tax on fares charged by commercial rideshare companies such as Uber and Lyft. These companies provide passenger car rides for a fare and also arrange shared rides where each passenger pays a separate fare. Typically, rides are requested using an online platform to connect drivers with passengers. The proposed tax is 1.5% on a shared ride fare and 3.25% on a private ride fare. The same business tax would also apply to driverless vehicle companies. The city would impose these taxes on fares charged by these companies until November 5, 2045. Passenger rides in zero emission vehicles would be subject to a 1.5% business tax until December 31st, 2024. The city would deposit the tax revenues, which are estimated at $30 million to $35 million annually, into a traffic congestion mitigation fund to spend for the following purposes. The San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency, which oversees the city's transportation system, including muni buses and trains, bicycles, traffic, parking and taxis, would receive roughly half of the revenues to improve muni service and reliability, maintain and expand muni vehicles and facilities, and improve muni station access. And the San Francisco County Transportation Authority, a county agency separate from the city that funds and plans transportation projects, would receive roughly half of the revenues to improve pedestrian and bicycle safety. A yes vote means you want to impose a 1.5% business tax on shared rides and a 3.25% business tax on private rides for fares charged by commercial rideshare and driverless vehicle companies to fund improvements in muni service and bicycle and pedestrian safety. A no vote means you do not want to impose this business tax. I'm here with Sunny Angulo from the Office of Supervisor Aaron Peskin and a proponent of Proposition D. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Hi. We're joined by Howard Epstein from the San Francisco Republican Party and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. Um, we're going to start with some opening statements and we'll begin with Howard. Why do you believe this proposition is so important? Well, I, I believe it should be defeated. That's not important. That this is not going to do anything. It's not going to stop the traffic. If you look at it and look at, for instance, the fees charged on a $20 single ride, it's going to add 65 cents to the ride. On the $10 ride share, it's going to add under a dollar to the ride. That's not going to dissuade anybody from taking the ride shares. And frankly, given San Francisco, given the state of the Muni, giving um, the ways the taxis work, where I live in the Richmond, it's almost impossible to get a taxi. The ride shares help, are helpful. I use them all the time to go when I'm going downtown, when I'm going out to dinner, whatever, and they're just very handy. And to take them people's away and say, well, people are going to run down to take the Muni just isn't going to happen. The other thing is in this, there's a paragraph in there that allows this commission to add a $300 million bond to be paid for. I mean, we're bond crazy now. We don't need another $300 million bond. So that's why I say vote no. It's not going to do any good. It's not going to curb traffic. It's not going to help anybody. Thank you, Howard. Sunny. Uh, well, uh, many, many studies have shown that uh, ride shares, commonly known as Ubers and Lyfts, um, have contributed to over 50% of our traffic congestion since 2015. So this is just in the last several years. 
And, uh, you know, frankly, unfortunately, it is an industry that we are preempted through state law from regulating. So we can't cap the number of vehicles. We can't, you know, require them to do background checks. We can't require them to do the same safety trainings, for example, that our taxi cabs uh, are required to do. But we can ask them to pay their fair share towards mitigating the impacts that they are having on our streets as well as helping us to fund the infra fund you know the maintenance and the creation of the infrastructure that they are frankly utilizing every single day that's our streets that's our bus stops that's our our curbs um, you know this funding is a frankly it, it is a very uh, modest business tax that would go towards 50% towards increasing our muni fleet hiring more bus drivers paying for operations and maintenance paying for our, um, our affordability programs, which is free muni for seniors and people with disabilities, free muni for youth. Um, and then the other 50% would go towards capital improvements, which are regulated through our transportation authority, a separate body that, um, that the Board of Supervisors and their county uh, designations help to oversee. And that's everything from senior crossings to uh, uh, pedestrian safety, disability access, um, as well as bicycle infrastructure in the city. So, I mean, I think, you know, the, the city has identified uh, a $22 million annual need in these types of, of uh, capital costs, whether it's the downtown Caltrain extension or whether it's your neighborhood improvements. And um, this is projected to bring in $32 million to $35 million annually, and I think it's a great investment in our system. Thank you, Sunny. Mm -hmm. um, so the first question is kind of following up on that, and it goes to Howard. Um, or sorry, it goes to Sunny, rather. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Uh, so the proposed tax is estimated to generate 30 to 35 million in revenue. That's the number that I have. You say 32 million, 32 million to 35 million in revenue annually. Um, can you talk about how this money will be spent and why you uh, are in support of that? Sure. So uh, again, 50% of these funds. Uh, I mean, all of it, all the money goes into a traffic congestion fund because you know, numerous studies, numerous experts um, have all agreed that one of the best ways to get people out of their cars is, you know, having reliable muni, it is having safe uh, bicycle networks, to have safe uh, public realm improvements where people, pedestrians, everyone in the city as a pedestrian can walk free of being hit by a car. Uh, and so 50% of this funding um, would go towards increasing um, capacity on our muni. Uh, we know from uh, recent hearings that we are vastly understaffed in terms of our muni drivers. We don't have enough uh, and uh, we need to be able to give them a competitive wage and hire more. And we need to increase our muni fleet. We've need, we need to be able to build out our rail network, including in the Richmond district, and, um, and make sure that our bus rapid transit is, is um, operating efficiently. Um, the other 50% of this would go to capital improvements that our transportation authority would be doling out. And so again, that's pedestrian safety improvements, bike lanes, protected bike facilities, things like that. Thank you, Sunny. Mm -hmm. Same question to you, Howard. So um, the revenue, uh, why would you oppose how this money is going to well, be? Well, I think, first of all, the city has enough revenue as it is. If you look at our budget, it's very high. We spend the second highest amount per resident of any city in the country. Only Washington, D.C. beats us. If you look at the, the spending, it's inefficient. Look at the streets. Look everywhere. The, what they do here is every time there's a problem, throw money at it. If that doesn't solve the problem, throw more money at it. If that doesn't solve the problem, throw more money at it. And nothing ever gets done. What we need to do is bring people into City Hall who understand how to manage, who understand how to plan, who are successful in the private sector, and will get things done. Thank you. Uh, my next question is go to, going to go first to you, Howard, and that is, is the proposed tax the correct way to reduce traffic congestion in San Francisco? And if not, what is? Well, I don't think that's going to, as I said in the opening statement, given the, the small fee, that's not going to dissuade anybody from taking the ride shares. Uh, what they have to really do is plan. Uh, if you look, they're taking lanes away and giving them to bicycles, just for instance. They're taking out parking. They're doing a lot of things that add to the traffic congestion. If they had more parking, leave the lanes there because there are more cars going down that need it than what there are bicyclists. I mean, we need some bike lanes, obviously, but not the way they're doing it now, not the way they're blocking the streets. 
and taking out the parking. Same question to you, Sunny. Thank you, Howard. Um, is the proposed tax the correct way to reduce traffic congestion in the city? I think it's one tool, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we, I mean, look, at this point, we are, our city has not kept pace with the population boom in the city. I mean, we are projected to have a million people in the city of San Francisco, in city county of San Francisco within the next 10 years. I mean, we don't have a, you know, a, a bus system, a rail system that is, uh, that is able to manage that kind of work, uh, re worker resident uh, traffic. And I think that this funding is really critical to being able to hire parking control officers. We have seen that be successful in helping to reduce gridlock and uh, what's called blocking the box where people are double parking in our streets. And I think, um, you know, this is one of many tools that we need to be employing as a city to actually make a dent in what is going to be gridlock like no one has seen before. I mean, in, this, in the south of Market, in the center of the city, you can't even get, we're all, we're, we're frankly, where all of the TNC traffic is right now, where it is a, a heat map of just, you know, total gridlock, that's, that's all where the TNCs are. So I think we've, you know, we've got to start employing some of the tools that we can at a local level, you know, until the state actually does something. Thank you. Closing statements. We'll begin with you, Howard. Well, as I said, I don't think this is needed. They're going to throw money at it, and they won't get anything accomplished, as with everything else. We need to plan. We need to take a step back, check our budget, and look at everything we plan. Look at how many employees we have at every department. We have more employees. Again, we have 20-something uh, employees for every resident. That's very high where other places like Philadelphia have half that and they have twice the area and twice the population or three times the population. So we really need just to just take a step back and rather than raising taxes, issuing bonds, every time something comes up, we need to step back and look, get effective people to plan and take it from there. Sunny. I, you know, I am not a proponent, and I think um, the the city is being very thoughtful about what kinds of taxes we are levying. Um, this is actually a business tax. It is not on the riders. It is not on the drivers. It is not on everyday citizens. Um, and I think that that is something that we're sensitive to, given the fact that the sales tax that was supposed to go towards the same types of improvements that we were never able to fund failed miserably because, uh, you know, taxpayers are like, why are we the ones that are paying to, to build out this infrastructure when massive corporations, including Uber and Lyft, are not paying their fair share? Um, the Transportation Task Force 2045 identified a huge need, $22 million annually in capital improvements and being able to hire more Mooney drivers. And that's actually money that we don't have, and that's why the dedicated piece of this is so important for us to be able to show the voters this is exactly what we're spending the money on. We're not spending it on hiring a new MTA director. We're not spending it on pension plans. We're spending it on these specific line items. And that is where um, taxpayers have told us they want an investment. And then to the, to the bond question, I want to clarify that this is not a bond. It does allow, this measure would allow for us to bond against the revenue that we bring in, but it is not a bond. And I think that's also very important. Well, thank you both for your yeah. time and for your input on this measure. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks for having us. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information about this and other ballot measures in the November election, please visit the Department of Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall starting on October 7th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 5th.